Welcome back to The Last Call. I'm your host, Justin Holbrock. Get ready for a week of nonstop action with teams you've never watched this season until now. But two teams we've been watching all year are Auburn and Alabama, and both are going dancing. I'm joined by Les Snead, GM of the LA Rams. I think the best place to start is maybe what could have been the end. You know, you had a 4-12 and team not sure that you were still going to be there the next year, and here we are one game away from the Super Bowl. What have these past two years been like? It's the second time in three weeks that Auburn has taken down a number one seed. They did so two weeks ago against Georgia, but this one was a little bit sweeter, taking down their rival Alabama in the 82nd edition of the Iron Bowl. Confetti reigns once again on the kings of the SEC as Alabama wins its fourth SEC title in five years. What was Georgia's revenge after last year's national championship turned into Jalen's. He came back and led the team to a game-tying touchdown and then the game-winning touchdown to give the Tide another SEC title under Nick Saban. Teresa, just two years ago, Clint Myers and his Auburn team were playing for a national championship. Now, he and his son, Corey, who resigned in March, are under heavy scrutiny. According to a report from ESPN, several players described a culture of routine manipulation, isolation, and exploitation. Auburn Athletics is saying Clint Myers retired, while the university claims it made staff changes, creating confusion on what the official stance is from Auburn. As you approach exit 79, leaving Georgia, heading into Alabama, there are two options, a right toward Lynette and a left toward Valley. But on Friday, two players, one from each city, found somewhere to meet in the middle. I saw how upset he was, and I just knew that I needed to go up to him and give him a hug and say, hey, he's still the best player around here. For him to come in and try to, to keep me up and to let me know to, um, to keep my head up, that, that did a lot for me. Daniels Valley Rams had just shocked Christian's Lynette Panthers, who won a state title last year. The schools are bitter rivals, but the two players have been friends since kindergarten. It was the first day of school, and our parents knew each other, so like yeah, our relationship just has just grown since kindergarten. But don't let the hug fool you. A lot of competition, also like from wrestling in the pool to kickball back in kindergarten. We've always tried to keep my home runs each other. All star baseball, having a competition throughout the week, practicing to see who can hit the most home runs. And now we're just fighting each other in high school football. It's always been competition between us. Three years ago, Christian's dad Clifford took the head coaching job at Lynette, putting a bridge between their friendship. We talk all the time still. You know, it's not that hard for me, but you'd think it would be because we're rivals and all that kind of stuff, but no matter where you go or anything, you still have friends. No matter what you're doing, rivals, it don't matter. With a, with a true best friend, like you don't have to talk to him every day for him to know you're still there. So I think he, he's more than the best friend to me. He's been like my brother since we was young. So. It's God and family before anything else, so, and he's like family to me, so I, it, it comes before football. The bond that they have, it'll be lifetime. You know, when they get their families and get married and they have children, they'll still come and visit each other and see each other. And, and to be honest with you, after that game was over, when I saw that, you know, my mind went immediately to this is what it's all about. Legendary NFL coach Vince Lombardi once asked, if winning isn't everything, then why do they keep score? Well, coach, these two friends might just be the answer. Reporting on your side, Justin Holbrock, News 3 Sports. Some people know the third baseman. Most people know the shortstop. Everyone knows the second baseman. Show off. But nobody knows Sammy Styers, the guy who takes care of this award-winning field at CSU. A lot goes on behind the scenes before you even step out onto the baseball field. I really wasn't even aware of the award until we got it. Well, the first thing I thought was about time uh, because we've had the best field in Georgia for a long time. Last week, the Georgia Baseball Coaches Association agreed, recognizing Columbus State's Ragsdale Field as the best collegiate field in all of Georgia. But a field can only win an award if someone's there to take care of it. We might have to throw a bag of turfus on it. Let it dry up as much as we can. I've, I've kind of just learned from experience, from what other people done. I've, I've basically screwed everything up uh, out here at least once and just try to not make the same mistake twice. He must not have made too many mistakes because he's been with Columbus State for 15 years. Just a crack of the bat today, boys. <laughs> Pop it a mitt. He's one of the reasons our baseball program is successful. Success comes and goes like seasons change. And the seasons changing makes Steyer's job more challenging. Uh, you go from 80 degrees to, to 30 degrees, and it kind of puts the grass in shot. And anytime the field floods, so you kind of kind of at the will of Mother Nature as far as that goes. We're lucky enough to be out here every day. One of the most beautiful things. It was definitely a selling point for me to come here. Um, Steyer's does an incredible job with it, and we couldn't be more thankful to have him on our staff. 
I get to come out and work on a baseball field every day, so that beats the heck out of uh, sitting in a sitting in a desk. Um, so I could I could see myself doing this job and, until uh, until they don't let me do it anymore, or, or till I'm physically not able to to come out here and do it. Reporting on your side, Justin Holbrock, News Three Sports. So the biggest question is, can you do an Ed Orgeron impression yet? Have Ed you? Orgeron. What was it like to hear him talking? Can you do the <laughs> yeah. impression? Because oh I've been working gosh. on mine. I think I've got a pretty good one. Yeah, on hey, if you have one, um, it's kind of hard to do it. I don't think anybody <laughs> can do it except for him, to be honest. I mean, hey, you want to give it a try? <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to have you here on the program, Peter. Uh, yeah, that's probably that's looking, probably the best. Looking one. forward to uh, hold that yeah. tiger. <laughs> that's exactly how it's now. I'm not. I'm not even going to lie. Central is undefeated at nine and zero, and if you notice, I recruited some guys to make me look better from the 19. 93 state championship team. I've got Griff Gordy. He was the quarterback, right, sir? We've got Mr. Brandon Johnson, and of course, we've got Scott King. But the man of the hour is Mr. Wayne Trawick. Coach, you were the only coach to lead a team to a state championship here at Central. What was so special about that team? Last weekend, the Falcons honored 64 fallen soldiers, including Columbus native John Tripp Roy III. Tripp graduated from Columbus High in 1994 and served for 15 years in the Marines before he was killed in action in 2009. We remember the life and legacy of Gunnery Sergeant Tripp Roy. I'm Matt Ryan, and we play for John Roy III. I'm Matt Ryan, and we play for John Roy III. Freak out! I'm like, and I go, I go, mom, 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 wake up! And I show it to her, and she, and scream. The Falcons, along with the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, or TAPS, connected 64 families of fallen soldiers to players and coaches with the team. People ask us all the time, like, you know, what do the families get out of this weekend with us? And I said, man, you got it all wrong. It's what the team we get from having you be a part of this weekend with us. One of those families honored was that of Trip Roy, who grew up in Columbus. I think Trip really had a servant's heart, and he carried that with him wherever he went around the world. So he really is a product of Columbus and of Calvary Baptist Church. Um, he looked for ways to help people. He helped around the world during his 15 years with the Marines. After his second tour in Iraq, as an explosive ordnance disposal technician, Tripp and his family stayed on a base in Okinawa, a city littered with bombs left over from World War II. While tending to one of those bombs on March 24th of 2009, a premature explosion occurred, killing Tripp instantly. He was 32 years old. The moment that it happened, uh, I felt a, a pressure, like, almost like something pushed me back in my chair, and uh, then a an extreme feeling of doom, something had gone terribly wrong. That's how close we were. I felt the, the impact at the instant of his death. More than the impact of his death is the impact of his life and how he approached each day. And he was goofy, he was silly, and he was a prankster. He was also a volunteer uh, with the youth group, any youth group that we were with, uh, taught Sunday school, uh, was also part of the praise and worship team, started a praise and worship team where need be, and so he just, he found a way. He always found a way to serve. He found a way, just like Amanda has, in raising their two children, Jackson and Alyssa, while also working as a high school teacher. To be a single parent and choose to remain a single parent and do the job that she's done with those kids. Uh, I call her Amazing Amanda. It's good to see their dad come out in them. Because he lived for the Lord, we continue to do so as well. And we learn a lot from the way he lived, and um, we just try to continue on with the way he taught us. Tripp's legacy also lives on at the Calvary Baptist Church, a staple of his life since the age of 12. On the church property, you'll find a steeple which you normally look up to see. But this steeple, affected by a tornado, a single sudden moment is grounded, much like the man on the plaque. That reminds us of the life of Tripp Roy. That's the single most important fixture there is on this property. It's the best. He holds steady at eye level, assuring all that John Tripp Roy III is, and always will be, watching over them.
Brendan, late this afternoon, as word of Chuck Person's arrest continued to spread across campus, the university released a statement saying that he will be suspended. With Many of the fans and students I spoke with were not aware of charges against Person, who was the most prolific scorer in Auburn University basketball history. He also led the team to an Elite Eight back in 1986. Hey, Phil. Yeah, in order to buy tickets in this 70,000-seat stadium, you have to buy a personal seat license, also known as a PSL. And a PSL is a one-time fee to get the rights for season tickets. It's actually a pretty common practice when you build a new stadium. 19 NFL teams have done it. This is the route that Devontae Smith took on his first and only catch of the game. It just so happened to be the game-winning touchdown in overtime as the Alabama Crimson Tide topped the Georgia Bulldogs 26-23, to giving the Tide their fifth national championship under head coach Nick Saban. There you have it. In only their second year in the MLS, United are cup champions. They did so by beating Portland today 2-0. And for the city of Atlanta, this is even sweeter because this is the first team to win a professional championship in Atlanta since the Braves in 1995. In Warm Springs, Georgia, you'll find the town's most known site, Roosevelt's Little White House. It was the personal retreat of our 32nd president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Just down the road, you'll find another retreat for a group of athletes called the West Georgia Wolverines. Off the sideline, one, two, three, Wolverines! And into the game. That's the team motto for the West Georgia Wolverines. You just get used to the chair. It's almost like it's not there, like you're just using your legs. Some wheelchair athletes can walk but they all have a physical disability preventing them from playing a stand-up sport. The one player on the Wolverines confined to a wheelchair Block time. is also the team's leader. I try and look for people that are struggling, people that, are, that look like they're having a hard time with their disability or people that have just newly found their disability. Logan was once one of those kids dealing with his disability after a car accident left him without the use of his legs. That was perfect pass. I was uh, five when I was put in the wheelchair, so I didn't really have too much to do around anymore until Coach Matt came and found me. I learned how to serve. In fact, I'm one of the ones who forgot how to say no. Coach Richard McIntyre, or Coach Mack as the players call him, took over the team back in 2001. His original plan was just to coach for a few months until the team could find a replacement coach. Well, 17 years later, he's still the head coach of the Wolverines and still loves every minute of coaching this team. After that season, I was hooked. Pick him up down here but stay with your man. Coach Mack served in the Vietnam War and started teaching physical education in Meriwether County in 1972, where he stayed until retiring 35 years later. One of the biggest things is, is to get kids who qualify to get in a chair. They're afraid of being ostracized for being in a chair. What would you be missing out on if this wasn't here? Uh, it's sports in general. I've made a lot of great friendships playing for this team. It all starts with taking that first spin on the court. I think all of us have helped each other grow. And we've had kids that were bullied, kind of depressed over their, um, over their disabilities and stuff. And I mean, by the time they end up leaving here, it's all gone. I mean, that's, that's so great to see somebody succeed who didn't think they could. 